How's it going, Eliminators? Today we're doing a rapid fire quick tip video. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so we're in the shop working on this log splitter here. I don't have the time to do a full video on this one, but this log splitter came in, customer said it just wouldn't start. What ended up happening was we had a complete rotor failure. See that? The magnet came off of the flywheel, guys, and what a mess that thing made. The magnet came off and it hit the coil. The coil's over on the ground there. It is damaged, and I was able to pull out all of these pieces here, just magnets broken all apart, scattered around the engine there. So we ended up having to pull off the flywheel, the coil. Luckily, the bolts didn't break off or strip the threads for the ignition coil there. So we ordered a new flywheel. We ordered a new fan just to be sure because these are plastic. So if the old one had a small crack in it, you spin this thing up to like 3,600 RPM on high. And next thing you know, the fan would come apart. And what else did we order? I'm just trying to think of everything quickly. The governor springs on these LCT engines have a tendency to rust and that will likely break in the future. So I ordered a new governor kit as well. It comes with the arm and the spring. We really only need the spring, but the spring for the throttle also got bent out of shape. So I'm going to be replacing that as well. You guys can actually see here that the tab where the throttle linkage is supposed to rest against is completely folded over. So that's likely what caused it to over rev. But you guys probably noticed the rope here and my torque wrench. So when installing a new flywheel, I have the spark plug out of the hole there and you guys can see the rope is going in. So if you're trying to apply a certain torque onto the flywheel nut, because this has a tapered end on the crankshaft and basically it's just a squeeze fit, you torque that down and that flywheel fits on there. You don't need to apply any nickel anises on a tapered style shaft. So in order to torque this, you need something to hold the flywheel. And I see a lot of guys, they try to put like a pry bar in there. That's the wrong way to do it because if that lets go, you could end up damaging your new magnet and again, check this out, one screw and a lot of adhesive. Anyways, when you're trying to torque the flywheel nut, well, the flywheel is gonna keep spinning, right? So the quick tip of the day is you basically rotate the flywheel around and then you start fishing in your rope. I'm just using some nylon yellow rope there. And then what you do is you keep rotating the flywheel around until the piston starts to come back up and it will squeeze up against the nylon rope allowing you to apply the proper amount of torque to the flywheel nut. Now, the only additional information that I will recommend is that when you are lowering the piston, you don't necessarily have to bring the piston down to bottom dead center or the farthest position that it can go in the cylinder because depending on which cycle or stroke your engine is, the valves can start to open on the engine. And what you don't want to do is stuff your rope inside of the cylinder here with a valve open and have some of the rope go in behind the valve. That's probably not really common, but it can definitely happen. And then it could hang the valve open when you're trying to push the cylinder back up and that's not good. So what I would recommend is only lower the piston in the cylinder down far enough to the point where you can fish a little bit of rope in and then turn the flywheel clockwise until it stops moving and now you can properly torque the flywheel nut. So using a three quarter inch socket, LCT calls for the 208cc engine to have a flywheel nut torque of anywhere from 75 to 80 Nm or Newton meters and 75 Nm converts to roughly 55 foot pounds, which is what I have my torque wrench set to here. And then you guys are going to see I'm applying a little bit of pressure and that's not going anywhere because of the nylon rope being used as a piston stop. You can buy an actual tool that threads into the spark plug thread, but I don't really like to do that. The nylon rope works wonders. Once you have that torqued, you might notice, hey, I can't get the rope out. All you have to do is spin the flywheel the opposite direction. So the piston lowers a little bit, and then you'll be able to go in here and fish out all of your rope. And then that spins around nice and free. Okay, so new throttle linkage and spring is hooked up and new governor spring hooked up from the middle hole as well down to 
that tab there, not the upper hole there, because uh, I noticed that when I moved it back, the spring fell out. So the customer probably hooked it up to that hole thinking that's where it went. So with this bent the proper way now, and the screw backed out, I'll still have to set the RPM, but at least now things work the way they should. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Like I said, super short but informational video using some nylon rope as a piston stop so that you guys can apply the proper torque spec to the flywheel nut. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe or click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.